I'm Pastor Kiyomo Butler. This is Restoration Victory Ministries. Hope all is well with everyone today. Man, I, I'm really excited about this conversation that we're going to have today. Um, I think that this is a much needed conversation for us in the body of Christ because I think that with this general understanding that the Holy Spirit of God is trying to get us to see and really grasp as a body of Christ, I think it would really change just your whole trajectory in life. It will change everything about your life, really. It will change everything about your thoughts, about your actions, about your emotions. Uh, it'll change your faith. It'll change what you believe for, what you expect, what you expect to receive. It'll change the way you go about seeking to receive these things. It generally will change everything. And we talked about this last week um, that I was going to start today with this, uh, my, my last message, actually, that we were going to start with this today. But before I get into the, the, I guess, context of the of the we're going to talk about tonight, or what we're going to talk about tonight, I really want to set it up with just an understanding. And before I really do that, let us just bow our heads for a quick moment of prayer. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, giving you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We ask, Holy Father, that it will go forth tonight. Your word, it will be all of you and none of me. Speak to me, Father, so that I can speak to these, your children, in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, it's really important for us to understand that this is something that the body of Christ knew um, when they first were, when they first became Christians, you know, before Christians, they were called believers, they were followers of Jesus Christ. Um, Christians, you know, it was kind of like a cult or a sect of people. You know, you want to be Christ-like, those followers of Jesus Christ, those believers. Uh, and in the early church, in the book of Acts, the apostles, they knew who they were as far as being led through and by the Holy Spirit and the power of God. Uh, they understood that they were spiritual beings and that the Holy Spirit of God on the inside of them gave them the ability to do everything that they did. You know, in the book of in the, in the book of Acts, you'll see the apostles more than one time where they'll ask, you know, have you received the Holy Spirit? Have you been baptized with the Holy Spirit? And they knew that the Holy Spirit and the power of God upon a man gave that man or that woman the ability to act in a supernatural way. Nowadays in the body of Christ, I think we have made Christianity. I know that we have made Christianity more of something to do as opposed to something to live and operate in as far as living and operating in the Holy Spirit and in the power of God. But also knowing and understanding that because we are children of God, because we have the Spirit of God on the inside of us, the Bible says that the thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. The Bible says that your adversary, the devil, walketh around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may destroy. This is all done in the spiritual realm. He's spiritually trying to come down and destroy your life, which is what is going on for us physically. We as Christians have to, and, and this is, you know, these type of teachings are what they call new type of teachings, but in actuality, they're the old teachings. Just of understanding that we're spirit beings. We have flesh. We live in a body. Our mind, our will, our emotions, our intellect, that's all part of our fleshly realm. But we're spirits. And in the spirit realm, we're in a constant battle, our spirit being attacked by the spirit of the enemy. And it's, really, there's two things that I want to talk about tonight. But one thing I'm going to give a quick, you know, with me, I'm always the type of minister that I'm not the do as I say, not as I do type minister. You know how mom and dad used to say, you know, Son, daughter, do as I say, not as I do. I like to use myself in this example. And just recently, just within the last half an hour, meditating and praying and going over what the, I feel the Lord was leading me to say tonight, the enemy came. Now, each of us have our own areas of weakness. My area of weakness, one of my main areas of weakness has to be or is my temper, my aggression. And, you know, I've talked about this before, but it's just amazing how tonight, while I'm in the midst of literally praying and meditating on the word that the Lord is going to allow me to lead tonight. And I got a phone call from a family member about an unfortunate family situation. 
And in this phone call, in this conversation, um, the enemy attacked me with my natural aggression through what would have been a roadway situation if I hadn't realized that it was an attack and that I hadn't caught myself from, and, and, and <clears throat> the thing about a sneak attack from the devil, we talked about this before, when it happens, you have to really, really, really be sober and really, really, really be vigilant and really, really, really be wise because one small mistake can cause a catastrophe because it, it starts with a look, an attitude, an action, um, a word that said something physical, something mental, something emotional, whatever your issue is, whatever you're dealing with. For me, I said something and then immediately when I spoke it, I realized, hold up, man, hold up, time up. I had to apologize to the family member that I was talking to and to myself and to God. So just as Christians, I, I because again, I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. See, what I always say when we're ministering and we're talking together is, the Bible says that there are none that are perfect. No, not one. So none of us are perfect. But what God wants is a person who has a perfect intention. You know, I said this before. It's different between tonight. i use this for an example. Had I started speaking out all kind of crazy profanity and our gestures and our gotten out of my car, and or gotten in a physical altercation with that particular person, that situation, and then got back in my car like it was okay, like I hadn't did nothing wrong, and drove off prideful of it, looking forward to doing it again. That is an issue with God. Living in our sin, being okay with our sin. The issue with God is never when you sin, when you slip, when you fall short of the glory. Understanding that you have sinned, owning that you have sinned, repenting from your sin and genuinely knowing that that sin, that attitude, that personality, that mind frame has to go. That's a big difference between those two people. So we have to know that when the, when, when the enemy attacks us spiritually and it leads into the physical realm, we have to be sober. We have to be vigilant. We have to be wise. We have to know because his only job is to destroy us. And for us who have decided that we're going to be Christians, for us who have decided that we love Jesus, for us who have decided that we want to live our life to the glory of God the Father, we have to be sober. And listen again, my past issues were fleshly, lust, anger. You know, those were my two major issues. Those may not be your issues. For a lot of us, it probably is. A lot of us probably won't admit it, but that may not be your issue. Your issue may not be that serious. Your issue may be something as simple as talking behind another person's back or doing anything on the workplace, in the workplace to get ahead. You know, you may be what one of those by any means necessary people, which means that you're willing to do whatever it takes to get ahead, whatever it takes to win, steal, kill, cheat, lie, whatever it is. Your issues may not be as bad as mine, but those issues as well as my issues, as well as any other issues, will continue to separate us as Christians from the glory and the love of God if we are not mindful of it. The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual hosts of wickedness in high places. Therefore, put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And having done all, stand. When you put your armor on, you're ready for the attacks. If you don't feel there's a need for an armor because you actually are cool in the things that you do wrong, then that in itself is a problem. That's why I always say you have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You have to establish a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, because, you know, I, I am always going to make sure that for me, I'm honest about the things that I go through, the issues that I deal with, so that others can see and say, well, you know what? Okay, I understand. Because I'm not saying that there aren't people out there who don't sin. So I believe that there are people out there who have, through exercising their spiritual man, has gotten to a point where 
They're not living, or, or the things that they do are, are, are so small and so minute and so few and far between that they are not daily battling with things that they need to overcome. I'm not daily battling with anger, but I know that anger is one of my issues. So I'm sober and I'm vigilant towards that angry man on the inside of me. And listen, the enemy, I'm use this for example for me. The enemy will use, say, me wanting to protect my family, my wife, my kids, myself, you know, my, my honor as a man. He'll use those things that we supposed to, as a man, stand strong in. He'll attack your nose because he knows that that's where you're weak. He'll, he'll attack me in those because he knows that's why I'm weak. But then at that point is when I have to call on the spirit of the Lord and I have to trust in God. I have to trust that the battle is not mine. I have to trust that the angels of the Lord are encamped around about me. And then I have to trust through wisdom. I can just rebuke that demon. I've never, listen, I've only seen it done a couple times in my life. I haven't even done it yet. I, I kind of look for the opportunity to do it. But just genuinely, when you're about to get into it with somebody and you know that the spirit is attacking you in whichever way, and you know it's not righteous, just rebuke the demon in them. And see how that works. See how that will change the whole attitude and the whole personality in that particular situation. Now, I don't want to harp on that. I just want to put that out there. We have to be sober and vigilant because this is a spiritual battle. And from there, let me lead into this next part. Beloved, listen. Right now on this earth, with everything that's going on, with everything that's going on, everyone is a life coach. <laughs> everyone is an authority. I mean, you can't turn on the TV. You can't turn on the internet. You can't socially, social media, digitally, in any way, shape, or form, any kind of digital medium, somebody is saying or doing something as an authority right now to help you grow and advance in life. But beloved, Strictly on just this one part, if these people are unbelievers, if these people are antichrist, you cannot take what they say <clears throat> and adopt that as your blueprint for your life. And even more than that, you cannot allow yourself to be in a relationship or in a close relationship, not just a boyfriend, girlfriend relationship, but friendship, work relationship, family members, parents, siblings, anything with anyone that does not love your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that does not honor the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I know it's hard. I know it doesn't make any sense. Listen, beloved, I can only say this to you now because I'm at the place that I am now. But I, for a long time, what I'm saying now, for a long time, that didn't make sense to me. For a long time, I didn't want to hear that. For a long time, I used to think it's not that serious. For a long time, I used to think, listen, we're all God's children. God loves all of us. That's really how I thought. And that's really the logic that I use to allow myself to be comfortable with, to be unequal. The Bible says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. I allow myself, me, I'm just talking about me. To be equally yoked with unbelievers because I just didn't want to deal with it or because it wasn't that serious or because my flesh told me that God's not worried about all that. God doesn't care about all that. You know, and any other excuse, any other rationale that we want to give ourselves, again, in our fleshly realm, to allow ourselves to stay in these situations. But the Bible says that it's two things. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Period. The Bible says, what fellowship does light have with darkness? Like, you can't, all the water don't mix. The Bible also says that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, which you have in you, which you have from God. You're not your own. You've been bought with a price. So glorify God with your whole body and your whole spirit, which belongs to him. So if your whole body and your whole spirit, if the spirit on the inside of you is God that worketh in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure through the spirit of God that is on the inside of you. So if the spirit of God is on the inside of you, then how can the spirit of God be okay with, like, is God okay with the devil? Like, is God brotherly, friendly? Is God, like I said before, is the angel Gabriel playing chess 
like literal, not it's a chess game in the spirit world. This is a warfare, but I mean, like literal, are they hanging out? No, beloved, and we and we can't and and listen. I'm not going to beat this into to, to ground to the ground. I'm only speaking this because I know for sure that many of us in the body of Christ are struggling because we're unequally yoked together with people and situations that do not honor Jesus Christ. Listen, it's hard enough for us as Christians to deal with our own fleshly issues. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. Like it's hard enough for us to fight that. That's one. Secondly, it's hard enough, hard enough for us being having to be sober and having to be vigilant for the adversary, the devil walking around like a ruined lion, seeking to destroy us. The thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. It's hard enough for us to deal with our own fleshly issues and deal with the devil trying to attack us every day. That in itself is enough. Then we're going to be friends with the devil and the antichrist spirit. So we're dealing with the devil attacking. We're having to deal with our own flesh, all the things that we have to deal with that, that are part of who we are, that we're trying to overcome. We're being renewed in the spirit of our mind. We're trying to put on that new man who's created after God and righteousness and in true holiness. But then we're going to, at the same time, add the fact that we want to be brotherly with a non-believer. It's just not biblical. It's not biblical, buddy. It's not biblical, brothers and sisters. It's not biblical. I said, buddy, as if I'm talking to my son. <laughs> it's not biblical and it's not correct. And, and, and one of the worst things that you can do is, listen, because I said this before, I'll say this and then I'll move on to my next point and we'll be out. The spirit of the Antichrist, the whole purpose of the spirit of the Antichrist is to attack Jesus is to attack God. It's to attack the children of God. It's to cause you to not believe in God because they don't believe and they want to make sure that you know that they don't believe to try and cause you to not believe. So we just have to be sober. We have to be vigilant and we have to really understand how serious that is. And how much, think about this, a Christian marries someone from another faith. A, a Christian marries a Muslim. Do you know how, do you know the spiritual warfare that goes on in a, in a home like that every day? Do you know the spiritual warfare that you bring children into? Do you know the, the position you put the child in? Do you know how confused the child is? Do you know how confused the spiritual energy in that home is? Because what, what happens is, praise God. A Muslim can marry, oh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit says a Muslim can marry a Christian and superimpose their Muslim ways on the Christian and on the home and be a good, and be, still be a good Muslim, be considered a good Muslim. As long as they're superimposing their ways and superimposing their thought patterns onto a Christian and onto the Christian home. But a Christian it's going to be hard for a Christian to truly be a good Christian and pray and honor their God in the way that the Muslim will allow them to and still be a good Christian. You know, we as Christians, we want to, and this, this goes into my third point. We as Christians, we want everything sometimes to make sense to us. I'm not speaking about the rest of the world. I'm sure they do too, but I'm not concerned about them. I'm speaking to the body of Christ. We want everything to make sense to us. Our fleshly realm, our mind, our will, our emotion, our intellect, our scientific mind, our educated mind, our logical mind. Like we want the Bible to make sense to us and we kind of want to rewrite the Bible in a way that fits into our perspective, our understanding of things. The reason why there are so many different denominations is because the Bible says what it says, but then people take it based upon their race. And what they do and don't like and what do and don't make sense to them and what they don't understand and what's not logical. And well, God doesn't do things that way anymore. Or we're going to just preach on this. And it causes so much confusion in the body of Christ. But the Bible says where there's envy and self-seeking, there will be confusion in every evil thing. But we as Christians, we want to logically make things make sense to us. We want it to listen. God called us to be his children. God didn't call us to help him rewrite the Bible. And I say this humbly, and this is going to be an outstatement, but beloved, we are not the first Christians 
on this earth, this generation, this, this time, we're not going to be the last one. Well, we don't know if we're going to be the last one. We're definitely not the first ones. Christianity has never, God is not changing Christianity, changing his rules, his laws, his playbook, the Bible to fit you. Jesus didn't ask you to help him write the Bible or help him to interpret the Bible. Jesus asked you to be a child of God and live according to the word of God. But we get so caught up in what our emotions feel or what we feel the Bible should say or how we feel the Bible should go and how, the, how we feel the Bible should look that we tend to change the Bible or we live a Christian life based upon our emotions and our thoughts and not on the truth. And my question, this will be my question. If we met Jesus tomorrow, can we say to Jesus that Jesus, I knew that person was an antichrist. I knew they did. The spirit of God that was on the inside of me, I knew they didn't honor it. I knew they didn't love it. I knew they didn't like it. I knew that they ridiculed you and ridiculed your name. They do not, they are, the, the, listen, the Bible says you can blaspheme against Jesus and God, but you cannot blaspheme against the Holy Spirit of God. I knew they didn't represent your spirit. They told me that all that spiritual stuff wasn't true. That's not true. It don't work like that. Spirit, Jesus is not the son of God. He didn't, no spirit didn't descend on him. None of that, none of that stuff. They don't believe it. And I know they didn't believe in Jesus, but I still chose to be their friend. How do you think that would work out in that conversation with you and Jesus? Or even more than that, you know what, Lord? I knew what your word said. I understood what your word said. I could read it. But I just, that just, man, I didn't like that part, Lord. You know what, that, that part there didn't really, that didn't jive with my emotions. That, that, I didn't, that didn't make sense. You know, I, I, I saw that, but I, I just didn't really like that, Lord. I just, you know, I just didn't like it. You know, I'm, I'm entitled, Lord. So I just didn't, I was entitled not to like that. I, I, didn't, I didn't like that part. I didn't think that you made sense when you said that, Lord. So I just didn't, I looked over that part. How do you think that conversation is going to go with God? Genuinely, how do you think that conversation is going to go with God? There are so many things going on in this earth right now, and I'll say this as I close. This is leading me to this. Multi-faith religions, multi-faith churches, multi-faith situations, that's not biblical. That is not biblical. And nowhere in the Bible is that biblical. It's biblical. Now we want to make it biblical, but that's not biblical. Allowing things to happen in the body of Christ, promoting certain things that go against the word of God, whether it's LBGTQ, whether it's adultery, whether it's fornication, whatever the things that are going on, whether it's okay to lie and manipulate it's okay to backbite. It's okay to gossip and talk about people. All this stuff that we do that's against the word, but we allow it. It has become a part of who we are. Or we allow it because we need the followers. We allow it because we need the members. We allow it because we need the collection. We need the tithes. We need the offering. We allow it because we want the membership and we want everybody to feel good about what we're saying. So because of that, we allow stuff that's not in the word. It becomes a part of our body. It becomes a part of what we believe, our faith. And we will really stand strong on that in my emotions because that's, you know, that's only right, Lord. It's just, you know, I feel like it's right. So it's right. It's not right, beloved. And it's not going to work well when you meet when you meet the Father. Remember, restoration, victory, restored unto victory on this earth. And we're starting to victory when we meet the Father in heaven. If we don't understand, if we don't get to a point where we understand that this thing is spiritual and everything that God has said in his word, the, the lessons that he gives, they all have a spiritual beginning. And, and he's explaining to us, that's why Jesus spoke in parables. Because some of the things that he spoke was hard to be understood, like the apostle Paul. So he had to break it down in a way where you're, fleshly mind can understand it but that doesn't mean that you and your fleshly mind get to change what's spiritual you don't get to change spiritual law we not you we i don't get to change spiritual laws <clears throat> and, and so beloved you know i know this is not a great uh, line upon line precept upon precept in the sense of me 
as normal, just spitting out a whole bunch of scripture to you. There was scripture involved, but this is more of a conversation for us to understand. Listen, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The Bible says, I am the Lord, I change not. God ain't changing. His word is not changing. His thoughts is not changing. My thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. This is the heaven is high above the earth. So my thoughts above your thoughts and my ways above your ways. That's what God said to us. So don't try to overthink it and rethink it and reanalyze it for God. Because understand that when you accept it, that it's a spiritual lesson being played out in the physical and you start trying to spiritually understand and spiritually see the ramifications, then the physical will just be cakewalk. If we start spiritually understanding and discerning and trying to see things the way God explained it in his word and try to make it make sense to us from a spiritual place instead of trying to, we can't dissect and analyze and logically make it make sense. See, the body of Christ is to come, praise God, I'll say this in the close. The body of Christ is to come together as one body. And the only way we can do that is through the Holy Spirit and the power of God. Because the logic that a man has from Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama is going to be totally different than the logic that a man has from New York or L.A. The logic that a person has from South America or a third world country is going to be totally different than the logic that someone has living in Atlanta, Georgia. The logic that the African man has from Nigeria is going to be totally different than the logic that a white man will have who's from Ohio. And so on and so forth. So logically, we can't try to have a logical body of Christ. Fleshly, we can't try to intellectually be Christians. We have to be spiritual discerning. The Bible says the natural man will not receive the things of the Lord because it is foolishness unto him. Nor can he understand them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritually discerned all things yet he himself can be discerned by no one. Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ Jesus, the spiritual mind of Christ Jesus. We have the spirit of Jesus on the inside of us. In order for us to live victoriously, it has to be through the spirit. Understanding line upon line, precept upon precept, that the word of God, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness so that the man or woman of God will be thorough and perfectly equipped for every good work. Given by God for us. Beloved, stop letting our emotions call us to change the word of God to fit us, to fit what we're going through, to fit where we are, to fit the things that we don't want to discipline ourselves in. So we change the word of God so that we can still be right and still be a Christian, but it's against the word. But our feelings and our emotions tell us we can do it, but it's against the word. That's not correct, beloved. Stop allowing yourself to be friendly with, to be family with, to be familiar with, to take advice from, to be led by a non-believer. <clears throat> In every aspect of life, there is a believer there that you can get advice from, that you can follow, that you can learn from, that you can make your idol. There's a believer in every aspect of life. Stop allowing non-believers to lead us. Stop being unequally yoked together with unbelievers on any level because that spiritual warfare, especially for those of us who don't understand it, is the most major spiritual warfare that we can have. The devil will not even chip. Praise God. I was going to close with me saying, and make sure that you're sober and you're vigilant. Make sure you watch out for those sneak attacks from the devil. Because if you're not sober and you're vigilant, the sneak attacks can end up being an all-out war and catastrophe that could change everything for you and everything that you're trying to do for Jesus. But I will say this and I close. The Holy Spirit says the devil will not tempt you in your flesh. The devil will let you run around in your flesh and be in your mind that you're completely perfect if all he can do is tempt you and defeat you and challenge you with the Antichrist spirit. The spirit of the Antichrist seeping into your spiritual man and causing this, 
dissension in your spiritual man and causing you to doubt in your spiritual man and causing you to question in your spiritual man. That spirit is worse than any other demonic spirit out there. You can come back from anything. You can be forgiven and relieved from anything. But if you have made up your mind that you do not believe in Jesus and that's where you stand, beloved, you got a problem. And in the same essence, if you're dealing with someone who has made up their mind that and they've called you to doubt and they've caused you to question and now your faith is gone and now your relationship is gone, you can definitely come back from that. But that is a hard, hard comeback. Because you allow the spirit of the Antichrist, the spirit that says that there is no Christ, to question you and everything that you supposedly believe in if you're a Christian. As a Christian, we're supposed to be as gun ho for Jesus Christ as the devil and his cohorts are for unrighteousness and as the Antichrist is for the devil against Jesus. Praise God. Okay, Lord. <clears throat> I was going to save this till next week. But listen, check this out. We have to be sober and vigilant, but we have to be buck wild for Jesus Christ. I am going to teach this because this would be too much for me to try to teach tonight. I just want to, there's something to think about. A little nugget for the next time we speak. And, and study this and look for this in the Bible. The Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of the Lord. The Bible never says, the Bible says, submit yourself therefore unto the Lord. Resist the devil and he will flee. The Bible never said to submit or to humble yourself under the devil. Jesus never submitted or humbled himself under the devil. Like, search the Bible. Please, my number's on there. Call me when you can find a spot that God, that Paul, that any of the apostles and disciples, when they were working and doing their thing for God, any of the apostles and disciples, any of the prophets of the Old Testament, David, Moses, Abraham, anybody, Elijah, Elisha, any of them submitted themselves unto the devil, humbled themselves unto the devil. Because they knew that in the spirit that they were in, in the spirit of God, there was no defeat. They had the victory. We have to spiritually understand that we are spirits born again through the blood of Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit and the power of God upon us. So spiritually, we are victorious. But we can't do that and say we're spiritually victorious, but then in our flesh, we're living defeated. We can't say that we're spiritually born again we have the blood of Jesus on the inside of us. We have the Holy Spirit of God on the inside of us. But then in our flesh, we flirt with the enemy. We flirt with the Antichrist. We just, that, that, those two don't go together. Now we talk about logic. Logically, that just doesn't make any logical sense. And listen, I don't want to get off into that because that, that's going to be a fun teaching. I look forward to that one. Tonight, let's just, re let's really realize, man, be sober and be vigilant, be wise, be watchful for the sneak attacks. Don't allow the sneak attacks to destroy your life and everything that you're working for. Do not allow the spirit of the Antichrist, whether it's family member, friends, work associates, uh, people that you follow, mentors, uh, anyone, anyone and anyone, anyone and anybody that has the spirit of the Antichrist, do not be un unequally yoked together with them, beloved. And don't think that your mind and your thoughts and your attitudes and your emotions move God to change his word. God's not going to change his word because you feel he should. And if you decide to change his word for yourself and live according to this new word that you decided you're going to live according to, we have to be careful about that, beloved. We have to answer to God for that. And no one wants to answer to God for that. So listen, I thank you, man. Glad you joined in with me today. I look forward to speaking to you again later on in this week. Hope everyone has a blessed night and a blessed rest of the week. Happy Veterans Day to all our veterans out there that serve and protect. We bless, we thank you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, <laughs> beloved. Have a great day. <laughs>